Hello everyone uh, from Good Shepherd Lutheran. This is Pastor Kyle and I want to shoot another video um, just as a follow-up I think to the one I shared with you the other day um, mostly because you don't want me uh, shooting a video for like 20 minutes uh, so we'll keep them short. Um, I want to begin with a short little liturgy uh, sort of a prayer for all of us um, students and those of us who work, um, no matter what we do in our lives. May we learn to love learning and work, O Lord, for all of the world is yours. And everything in this world speaks, each in its own way, of you, of your mind, your designs, your artistry, your power, your unfolding purpose. All knowledge is your knowledge. All wisdom is your wisdom. Amen. Everything we do is God's, uh, and our lives are God's, and our work, our schooling, everything is God's. And because of that, we should take part in our daily lives, our daily activities, with a different set of eyes, I think. Um, not that looks at school or work with... Um, uh, you know, as some sort of drudgery or, or something that we don't want to do, but something that we want to take part in, because no matter what we do, we are taking part in God's goodness in this world and sharing in that and hopefully revealing that to others around us as we do our, our work or our school. So let that be an encouragement for you today. Um, the other video I shared was uh, about the passage from John chapter 2 where Jesus turns the water into wine and I uh, talked about that uh, yesterday how God shows up um, when things run dry and when things run dry doesn't mean that hope is not still there that in fact Jesus transformed a wedding feast where the wine had dried up into an ongoing celebration where uh, the joy continued and to not lose hope even when life seems to run dry. Um, and I want to talk a little bit more about another part of that story. Um, Jesus, in that story, uh, produces an abundance of wine, and he uses these Jewish purification jars, which were pretty large stone or, or clay jars that held in the Gospel of John says 20 to 30 gallons, give or take, um, and Jesus used six of them. And so if you do the math, either way, Jesus produced over 100 gallons of wine, probably. And that's a lot, uh, more than probably the wedding feast expected, more than probably they could consume. They probably had to invite more people just to drink more, just to get rid of the wine. Uh, but there's an abundance of wine here in this story that comes at the hands of Jesus. And that's not by mistake. Jesus comes to bring abundance, to bring goodness. But also in the Old Testament, it talks about the presence of God among us in terms of uh, joy and festivity and uh, overflowing of wine. And the point there is that Jesus in that wedding feast, in um, producing so much good wine, sends a signal that he is God among us. And it's a time to celebrate, a time of abundance, because God is present. And why wouldn't it be, right? Uh, when God is present, why would it be a time of, of, of burdensome uh, work or, or scarcity? Why shouldn't it be a time of abundance and joy and a time of celebration? Um, where God is present, there is celebration. Why not? Um, and I uh, it kind of hits me sometimes that for a lot of people, church has become a place of non-celebration. Uh, church is a place of boredom and, and work and rules. And man, that's uh, really unfortunate, I think, because the church is the body of Christ. The presence of God in the world is among us. And we should be, of all people, a uh, people of celebration, of joy, of abundance. And whatever we need to do to send a message to the world that we are a place of joy and celebration in Christ, uh, we need to be about that work. 
not turning church into a place that no one wants to be a part of because it's dry and dead and boring, but a place of joy and celebration because God is present. And that should be what we are, what we're about. The other thing in that story, though, is that Jesus used these Jewish purification jars, which were associated, for better or worse, with um, with laws and rules and rituals that the Jewish people had to go through to maintain their Jewish identity. Um, and no doubt, these purification jars had maybe become a sign of burden, of uh, of unjoy, if you want to put it that way. And Jesus turned, used those and used them for a way different purpose than they were intended for. And he transformed them from uh, jars of uh, ritual to jars of joy. It's as if Jesus, uh, you know, turned them into uh, religious, turned them from religious symbols to kegs used at a party. Uh, that's kind of what happened. And there's something interesting there that Jesus in that story uh, communicates that he is here to transform things, to transform what we see and how we operate and the things we use from things that may be burdensome, that may be ritualistic, uh, to things of joy and celebration that pour out not rules but wine. And um, he, in a way, he's sending a message that he's rewriting things. And things once used for one purpose, because of his touch, are used for a different purpose. That, uh, and that purpose is to bring life and joy. And because Jesus is renewing everything in this world, there's nowhere or no place in this world where Jesus' presence is not to be found or to be felt. And there is no place... And nowhere, no reason then that anything can't be used as a way uh, to celebrate the joy of Jesus Christ among us. That nothing, even the most burdensome, boring things, should be transformed into things of joy because of Christ's presence. And that should be the way of, uh, our, of our sort of life as Christians, our mentality. The way of looking at things is to look at them because Christ is present. Joy and celebration can happen here no matter what it is. And yes, that even means times of difficulty, hardship, and suffering. Jesus transforms even those into times of joy and celebration. And that requires for us a different kind of hope a different kind of outlook that is different because Christ is present. So be people of joy today and tomorrow and the next day. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter what is in front of you, look at it as something where Christ's presence is, is both available, to be felt, to be experienced, and where joy and celebration can happen because Christ is present. Let that flow through you, just as it flowed through those old clay jars at the wedding in Cana. Let the joy of Christ flow through you, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. May Christ be with you today. We'll see you uh, on Sunday.